Animal Farm was written in 1945 by George Orwell and satirizes the rise of the Soviet Union through an allegory involving animals. Chapter 9 of Animal Farm begins with Boxer striving to work harder to rebuild the windmill after the conflict with Mr. Frederick. The other animals are suffering from a shortage of food, with Squealer persuading them otherwise. Additionally, the other animals believe their life is better compared to when Jones was in control, through Squealer's manipulative dialogue and the idea of freedom from Jones. Napoleon further displays his bias towards the pigs and segregates them from the other animals. Animal Farm is declared a republic, with Napoleon as its leader. Chapter 9 sees the collapse of Boxer from a lung malfunction. Boxer is then taken to the knackers, however, the animals are unable to prevent his death. Squealer then manipulates the others, capitalizing on his death to further cement the ideology of Napoleon and his power. The end of the chapter sees the pigs consuming large amounts of alcohol. Important quotes are as listed. Chapter 9 has a multitude of important references to its real-world archetype during the reign of Stalin and the Soviet Union. The suffering of the Russian people is shown through the readjustments to the rations and the ever-growing consumption of the ruling party. This is shown through the malnutrition of many of the animals and the excessive consumption of alcohol dedicated to the pigs. This can be seen as a direct reference to the Ukrainian famine, a famine under Joseph Stalin to replace the Ukraine's small farms with state-run collectives and punish those who posed a threat to his totalitarian authority. With an estimated 3.9 million people dying, the famine showed the ruthlessness of Stalin and how he valued his power. The animals in Animal Farm pose a threat through their disagreements with Squealer in the previous chapters, and so their rations are readjusted as punishment. The collectivization of the Soviet people was part of Stalin's five-year plans for the country's transformation from an agricultural-based society to an industrial one. Chapter 10 reveals the introduction of new technologies, with the cost of the transformation being the exploitation of the proletariat and the mistreatment of the Russian people. Additionally, the return of Moses signifies the rehabilitation of the Russian Orthodox Church. Stalin's rejection of religion and encouragement of atheism failed due to the false promises of religion the Russian people had, and so Stalin allowed religious freedom to reduce civil tensions. Similar to the church, Moses doesn't help the animals and only takes food away from them, like how the Russian church was viewed as the organs of bourgeoisie reaction, used for the protection of the exploitation and the stupefaction of the working class. The death of Boxer signifies the death of the ideas of the revolution. The society the animals strive to achieve was corrupted by the greed and capitalist ideals of those in charge. It represents the exploitation of those who helped bring about the socialist revolution for more reforms and freedoms and were loyal supporters of the Soviet Union. Boxer is a horse, symbolizing power, strength, and hard work. However, they also represent stupidity and simplicity, shown in the ease in which humans contain them and use them for their own benefit. The death of such a pathetic, mindless creature relates to the overall message being conveyed in Animal Farm. The ideologies and reforms communism attempts to bring about are easily corrupted by the greedy and exploitative behavior of those in charge, transforming the society into a replica of the capitalistic behavior that they despise. It shows the working class are taken advantage of because of their lack of knowledge and intelligence. They are exploited for monetary gains throughout their life for the monetary and political gain of those in charge. Boxer's death is exaggerated and manipulated to betray him as a die-hard Soviet. Squealer capitalizes on his death to express the kindness of Napoleon and further cement the idea that the totalitarian authorities are kind-hearted and caring. It was the most affecting sight I have ever seen, said Squealer, lifting his trotter and wiping away a tear. I was at his bedside at the very last, and at the end, almost too weak to speak, he whispered in my ear that his sole sorrow was to have passed on before the windmill was finished. Forward, comrades, he whispered. Forward in the name of the rebellion. Long live Animal Farm. Long live Comrade Napoleon. Napoleon is always right. Those were his very last words, comrades. Squealer is a pig and a master manipulator. Pigs are commonly associated with greed, gluttony, and fat. Very similar to humans. Squealer's use of accumulation and numerical information to insist on the supposed benefits of the farm are used to manipulate the views of the animals convincing them their life is better now compared to the reign of Jones or the Tsar. The event highlights the excessive, intricate language used by the Soviet press to confuse the uneducated Soviet people. The theme of manipulation and propaganda is used to identify the dangers present to the naive working class. Reading out the figures in a shrill, rapid voice, he proved to them in detail that they had more oats, more hay, and more turnips than they had had in Jones's day that they worked shorter hours, that their drinking water was of better quality, that they lived longer, that a larger portion of their young ones survived infancy, and that they had more straw in their stores and suffered less from fleas. The same theme is present in Boxer's death, which is used by Squealer to emphasize the purity and goodwill of Stalin. Was with him right 
to the end. His last words were, Forward, comrades! Long live Napoleon! As for the wicked rumour that Boxer was sold to a glue factory, our beloved leader would never do that. Long live Napoleon! You know this is fake because who would have said that as their last words? That's right, no one. The same quote further ties with the theme of exploitation of the proletariat. Boxer, a hard-working, die-hard Soviet, overworks himself for the benefit of the farm. Throughout the story, he receives little to no praise for the amount of work he performs for the farm. In return for his hard work, he's turned into Elmer's glue and used to promote the reign of Napoleon. The false idea of freedom is a prominent theme throughout the book. The pigs constantly remind him of their liberation from the oppressive Tsar. However, none of the animals consider the oppression of the pigs due to the constant use of propaganda and manipulation to make them obedient and unquestioning. They're starving, overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, and ignored for the monetary and political gain of those in power. But none of that matters because they're free. Wow, isn't that great? The idea of freedom under the Soviets further ties with the exploitation of animals and the power of the Soviets. Finally, the theme of resistance is prominent, mainly the lack of resistance present in the book. The theme revolves around Benjamin the donkey. Donkeys are associated with service, peace, and intelligence. But Benjamin is also a donkey, meaning he's an ass. Intellectuals such as Benjamin had the ability to neglect the oppressive regime of Stalin, however refused to help those suffering. Orwell depicts the extent to which intellectuals would only oppose Stalin's principles when the situation turned grave. Benjamin's cynical outward appearance and lack of interaction with the others prevents him from sparking change in the others. The death of Boxer was heartbreaking enough, however his lack of connection with the other animals means he doesn't care enough about fairness and equality. He's just a donkey, getting by, minding his own business. Similar to intellectuals during Stalin's regime. Chapter 9 of Animal Farm has prominent themes of freedom, exploitation, manipulation, and resistance. These themes show further prominence throughout the story, and add to the overall message Orwell is conveying about communism and its hypocritic ideology. Chapter 9 reveals the exploitation of the proletariat for the monetary gain of higher powers. The false sense of freedom felt by the Russians because of the constant pump of Soviet propaganda and the lack of intelligence among the working class. It highlights the hypocrisy and irony of the actions of the Soviet Union, and the lack of resistance from those with power and knowledge. Animal Farm highlights the iron-fisted rule of Stalin on the Russian people, and how his success as a totalitarian authority was constructed around atrocities, violence, and ruthlessness. For any aspiring dictators, take notes from this man. The compliance of the people comes from your treatment of them. Give them education, and they will overthrow you for more reforms and power. Oppress your people and suck them dry of any monetary and political gains, and your power is sure to stay. And so, armed with this knowledge on dictators and exploitation, I've come to the conclusion that my English class is a totalitarian dictatorship, governed by an oppressive ruler bent on the exploitation of students to pay taxes. Sure, we are free from the restraints of bad education, but that doesn't mean we're free from the oppression and exploitation of a higher power. Now is the time for revolution. The f*** you say to me, you little- Counter-revolutionist.